In this one, we're going to have a look at the very first week of development on the Laravel microservice. So it sells first initial steps of installing a Laravel project, setting up the tests and coming up with a logical flow, which makes it easy for developers to work on the project. So these are the subjects which I've covered in week one of recording. So the first thing that I did was I've created a Laravel project using the Laravel installer, decided how we're going to set the project up. Did I need to use anything like Laravel Breeze or anything like that? Decided because it was going to be purely back end. We didn't need anything like that. So I just set it up using PEST as the testing framework and also using SQLite as the database. So very bare basics that we need there. And then uh, what I do is I've created a video where I explore the a Laravel project, show you what all the folders are, what all the files are, and an explanation. One of those explanations which often go missing in other tutorials where you don't really know where you should be putting all your files and folders. I've had a quick run through of that, and so that'll give you a good understanding of where everything should go. Okay, and then course dependencies. So um, the way I'm running this course really is I'm going to give you a composer JSON file with all of your dependencies already in that file. And so when you start the course, all you'll need to do is just run composer install and you'll have the exact same setup as me. So where you see me installing dependencies throughout the course, you won't actually need to do that. You'll just need to run composer install at the beginning. You'll have everything that you need. And so this week, the things that I've added, I added um, PHP Stan, so PHP Stan, static analysis tool, tests your code in a different way than like functional testing. It tests for things like type safety, are you missing return types, and just really looks at the quality of your code, seeks out dead code, things like that. And so as well as PHP Stan, I've used PHP Stan extension installer, which just makes it a little bit just reduces a bit of friction and a bit of config when you want to use extensions such as Laristan, which is a PHP extension, extension particularly made for Laravel and just helps with some of Laravel's little quirks and bits of magic. Okay, what else did we do? So we set up uh, the course dependencies and then uh, we set up a PHP Stan configuration. If you've ever configured PHP Stan before, uh, it, there's something called the PHP Stan Neon file. And here, what I've done is I've set up the path where I want to analyze. And so that is in app. And that is where we'll write most of our code. That's where we'll create most of our classes, where your controllers go and your service classes, things like that. And I've set it to the very highest level. And so that's a good way to start a project, really. The highest level is the strictest. It'll perform very strict checks. And if you start high, then at least you have the option to bring it down lower if you start running into problems. But if I run my tests now, and I'll show you how I do this in a moment, uh, but I've set up a composer script where I can simply run composer test. It'll run PHP stand as well as past. So what we've run there is PHP stand, as you can see, uh, everything's passing there, no errors, and it's also running my uh, pest tests for me. So PHP stand configured, all set up, composer scripts. So that's basically what I've just shown you there. I'll show you where we do this. So as well as adding all your uh, auto loading and as well as your dependencies in composer JSON files, you can also add scripts. And so here, there's some which are already done for you when you first install Laravel, but there's nothing to stop you also creating your own. And so that's what I've done here. So when you saw me run composer test just then, what that did is it ran this script here. And as you can see, that runs Fendor bin php stan and also php artisan test. I've set up that command to run pest tests for me. And so that is why we saw php stan and pest tests being run when we ran composer test. So if you've ever worked with microservices before, you probably will have seen health check endpoints before. Very important for monitoring the health and that your service is up and running and behaving as you expect it to and so you can use it for real-time monitoring fault detection automated recovery 
and just enhanced reliability. And so what we do is we create a, our own routes file inside of routes. So when you first create a Laravel project these days, uh, you'll get a web.php file and a console.php. But because ours is mainly, it's really an API, it's just a backend, um, I've created an API file. And in there, I created an endpoint called health check. And this just returns a simple JSON response to say status OK if everything is working uh, as you expect. Now, in reality, health check endpoints, a lot of the times they return a lot more information than this. So you might want to know what version of the code you're running. So something like the git commit might be included, um, when it was last deployed, and also things like if your service has dependencies on databases and things like that, it'll also check is the database up and running. So you can quickly diagnose faults if you do see that you're having errors in your overall system. Okay, and then after that, we went into pest feature tests. So uh, what we're going to be working on mainly is the concept of an incoming Google webhook. So think about you've um, downloaded an app off your phone from the Google Play Store and you've subscribed to premium features. When you make that subscription, Google publishes a webhook and that is what our application is listening for. And so when Google publishes that webhook, you can take the information regarding that subscription, regarding the subscriber and do useful stuff, useful marketing things with that information. So that's basically what our app is doing here. And so we've just set up a uh, test here, Google webhook test, and we're going to build this out. But this test is something which we're going to keep running throughout the course as we build out the functionality more and more we'll just keep running this test make sure everything is behaving as we expect it to do and as well as having this feature test this overarching feature test input 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 output test if you like uh, we're also going to write quite a few unit tests just to drill down on those finer details for example if we have some complex logic here and there so what this test does at the moment, we've said it processes subscription purchase notifications. Uh, we're going to create a payload. So this is like a payload, which you will get the payload being the data, which Google uh, publishes when you subscribe in the app. And so it sends out all this information as a notification payload. And so what we're doing is we're sort of creating our own payload for testing purposes here. And then we're using some of PEST's helper functions to mimic a post request to our application to this endpoint with that payload and these headers. And then after that, at the moment, we're only asserting that we have an empty content response. But with this kind of application, the main thing you want to be asserting is that the data which we later forward on to the marketing platform is in the correct order and that it is actually being forwarded to the correct place. So a lot more work to do on that test, but like I say, it's something that we're going to build out as the course progresses. Next, we went on to single action controllers. So all the webhooks coming in to this application, they're all gonna come in through one endpoint. And so we go back to our API uh, routing file here, you'll see that, that endpoint is called webhook. And then we have this webhook controller class, but you'll notice that whereas here we have a function which is handling the request, normally what you would do is you would say what method on that controller is going to actually handle the request. But we are using a single action controller, i.e. one which just has an invoke method. And if we don't specify which method we want to pass the request to when we define this route. And what Laravel will do is it will look on that class for an invoke method. Do you have an invoke method? Yes, we do. And that is where the request will be sent to. And so here, this is where we are handling that request. Okay, and then after that, and what I've started working on now is when you're building something like this, two of the first things that you want to uh, take care of is modeling the incoming data 
and modeling the outgoing data, the data which is going to be forwarded. So, uh, so far I've managed to do the first part of that, modeling the incoming data. Have I done that? I've simply created a webhook DTO, and that will just hold two pieces of information for the time being. Basically, what is the origin? Where has this come from? For example, Apple, Google. So I've called that platform and then also the payload. And so in that lesson, all we do is we simply create this webhook DTO. And also I give a big explanation of what DTOs are, why we use them in our applications. And so if you've never used them before, or if you have used them, but not really uh, understood much about them, apart from just having used them, then I think you'll find that lesson really interesting and really informative. And when we talk about the payload here, what we're actually talking about is I've mocked up a Google payload, which is actually fairly realistic and looks very similar to what a real uh, Google payload looks like when you make an app subscription. And this is it really, it comes in JSON format, uh, has these particular keys, things like notification type, just has a number but what that means is it's been a subscription purchase and so we'll take some of this information to make a lookup in the database to check what kind of event we're dealing with here but in these first lessons all we're going to do is take this payload and actually store it on a property on our webhook DTO and so once we know that we have this webhook DTO it exists then what we need to do is when the request comes into our application we need to instantiate it using information using data which comes with that request and so you'll notice I have the comments in here so the way I teach often is I first drop the comments in to explain what we're going to do then it all makes a lot more sense when we actually write the code and so the platform we're going to get that from a header so we're going to look in the request headers for a header called x webhook source if we have a value for it then we will use that value convert it to lower case for consistency if we don't get a value we're simply going to mark it as unknown and then later on in our application we can throw an exception if the platform is unknown so that's how we get the platform the payload there is an all method on the request which will take the incoming uh, JSON payload convert it to an array and so we're going to use that to create our payload and store that when we create our webhook DTO so that is really as far as we have got and then what I'm going to start working on uh, this week is modeling the actual data going out so the data which is going to be forwarded to the audience grid marketing platform once we have modeled those two things it just makes it a lot easier to work from a to b on the insides of our application we know what the incoming data looks like coming in we've modeled that we know what the outcoming data is going to look like we're going to model that and so then it's just a case of working on the insides of our microservice and getting one, being able to map that data, do some lookups in the database and perform some mapping so that we're able to then forward the data in the format that the marketing platform expects.